Good afternoon to you and welcome to Lunchtime News here on TV1 News. First, I am Shine Jarampati. Let's start off the look at your headlines this afternoon. Mithuramula garbage dump collapse. Death toll rises to 31. Japan to provide emergency relief goods to the victims of the Mithuramula tragedy. Service of the wildlife official that shot dead an elephant in Omante suspended. Now on to those stories in detail. Work has begun to identify those who lost their homes in the collapse of the Mithotomulla garbage dump. Kelambo District Secretary Sunil Khanangara said the process will be expedited in order to begin assessing suitable lands for their relocation. When news was made inquiries in this regard from Minister of Lands, John Amaratunga, he said measures will be taken to immediately release suitable lands identified by the respective divisional secretaries. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health says efforts have been taken to prevent the spread of diseases among the victims of the collapse at the Mithotamula garbage dump. The death toll from the collapse of the Mithotamula garbage dump now stands at 31. According to current estimates, 145 homes are destroyed in the collapse. 625 people from 180 families have been displaced. The National Building Research Organization notes that it will be conducting a, a severe in order to a survey, rather, in order to ascertain how to minimize risk in identified landslide-prone areas. Senior geologist Dr. Garmini Jayati noted that the pilot project will be launched centering around the Nuwara area and Padula districts. He noted that both local and foreign expertise will be sought for this project. Jayati added that based on the success of the project, steps will be taken to conduct the survey in other risk areas around the country. The government of Japan has offered to provide emergency relief goods to the victims of the Mithotomulla garbage dump collapse. The Japanese embassy in Colombo said goods such as tents, sleeping pads, water purifiers and generators will be provided. The Japanese government has also taken measures to dispatch a technical team to Sri Lanka to, uh, to assist in the investigations into the collapse of the Mithotomulla garbage dump. Meanwhile, the President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, Tan Dai Quang, has expressed his condolences over the tragedy in Mithatamulla. The Vietnamese President made the gesture during a meeting with Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Speaking to the Prime Minister, President and General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam had said Vietnam is ready to provide any assistance to Sri Lanka if required to prevent another tragedy of this nature. Meanwhile, Chairman of the National Assembly of Vietnam had held bilateral talks with Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. During the meeting, a decision had been taken to strengthen ties between the National Assembly of Vietnam and the Sri Lankan Parliament. The office of the Prime Minister said talks was held on an exchange of ideas and experiences of legislators of the two countries. The Prime Minister had said a group of parliamentary representatives from Sri Lanka will look to engage in an educational tour of Vietnam in the near future with the coordination of the Chairman of the Oversight Committee on Parliamentary Affairs, MP Ranji Taluvihara. Also making headlines this afternoon, the wildlife officer who shot dead a wild elephant while attempting to rescue it from an agrarian well in Omante Vaunia has been suspended. No. They said that the elephant attempted to attack the machine and them, and that is when they shot him. I was not able to get all the details because I was at another meeting. I saw the story last night and I witnessed the visuals. We are going through the visuals from all stations. I have called on the DIG in charge of the area to conduct a separate investigation. The OIC of the area had also been present when the incident took place. So I am confident the DIG will provide me with a detailed report. I will conduct an independent investigation. The law is the same for everyone. There have been instances when individuals have been imprisoned for taking the life of an animal. To the local news, the Ministry of Health will seek recommendations from the medical sector to determine if a drug approved by the World Health Organization for dengue is suitable to be prescribed in Sri Lanka. The ministry said it will seek the assistance of specialist doctors for this purpose. It added that following an analysis on the recommendations, a decision will be taken on whether the drug could be used in the country. The Ministry of Health went on to say that they will complete this process expeditiously. On to more local news, a 22-year-old youth died after drowning in the Panama tank in Ampara. According to the police, a victim and aid resident had fallen off the boat on which he was travelling while attempting to retrieve his pedal, which had fallen into the water. 
The remains of the victim were recovered last night through the combined efforts of the Panama police and area residents. The post-mortem examination is due to be conducted today. The Attorney General informed Colombo Additional Magistrate Jeram Choksi today that an extensive investigation is being conducted into classified information received to the Criminal Investigations Department from private investigators in relation to the murder of rugby player Wasim Tajuddin. Deputy Solicitor General Dilan Ratnaik, appearing on behalf of the Attorney General, said investigations are also underway to ascertain if money had been withdrawn from credit cards belonging to the victim on the day of the incident. The credit cards were reported missing. The Deputy Solicitor General also informed court that investigations are being held over the incident of missing pages of the vehicle movement's logbook at the Presidential Security Division on the day before the killing. The additional magistrate ordered that the second suspect in the matter, former senior DIG Anura Sena Naika, has been remanded once again until the 27th of this month. Well, we have a special guest in our studios this afternoon. He's just 13, turning 14 in June, and is already new, reaching new heights in the world. Aaron Gunawardana took part in the recently concluded second round of the Asian Challenge of the 2017 Asia Road Racing Championship in Thailand and finished second on the podium and became the first ever Sri Lankan rider to be on the podium of the competition. Well, welcome Aaron to the newsroom. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Well, I, 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 I certainly hope so. Well, Aaron... Simple questions, first things first. At what age did you get onto a motorcycle? My first mo motorcycle was given by my dad at the age of three. And uh, that motorcycle was used by my brother. So the my motorcycles that he used was passed on to me and we raced like that. Well, it seems that you, you come from a long line of petrol heads, your dad, your brother and everyone. Uh, so given all this background, who is your inspiration? Who supports you in all of this? My dad is definitely the per mo person that supports me the most. But I've been inspired by other riders such as Valentino Rossi, Mark Marquez. They insp I watch them all every, every Sunday on the MotoGP and they inspire me. Uh, speaking of MotoGP, do you see yourself at a, at a high end, at a massive crowd of, a, of MotoGP Grand Prix? That's my aim since I started riding. Uh, since the age of five I had that dream. So did my brother and we are looking forward to reaching that far. See Aaron, most of us don't just randomly start something. You have to have had start somewhere. Like you, I don't think you got on a racetrack just by getting on a bike when you were three years old. I was told that you took part in the Fox Hill races when you were much little. Tell me about those experiences. Uh, I took part in the Fox Hill races at least four times. And that was uh, during my PV days when I used to ride the small bikes. And uh, uh, that's Sri Lanka's biggest sporting event. So I've had a lot of experience there riding with the other riders. And that's one of my uh, greatest experiences here riding in Sri Lanka. Now, given the fact that you're just 13, uh, a question that many parents who are watching right now is, how is this kid, he's traveling overseas back and forth, how is he balancing his sports, and studies, family? Are you being trained to balance all of this at the same time? Um, it's really hard to manage both since uh, last year and this year I've been traveling a lot. I've been missing a lot of schoolwork. So every time I go, uh, my mom organizes tuition classes for me. So when I come back, I do uh, almost every day I have tuition classes except the weekends. So from to uh, right off school, I have tuition classes till about six. So does my brother. and. Uh, other things we focus on are, are fitness, early morning and late in the night. Well, that's impressive. Uh, talk about what is in your hand right now, uh, Aaron. It looks pretty intense and impressive. Could you just describe what's in your hand? This I won in the Asian Championship uh, last weekend. Could you mind showing that to the camera? I think pretty sure, I'm pretty sure our viewers at home would like to see uh, get a glimpse of that. Um, well, there you go. That's what Aaron won at the... Asian Challenge of the 2017 Asia Road Racing Championship in Thailand. Uh, I believe you will be heading out to Japan uh, later next month or yes. later in the year to compete in the third round. So what are your ambitions there? My, I'm hoping for a win since I came second. I'm hoping for a win in Japan. And uh, mostly I'm focusing on the championship, trying not to crash and hopefully win the championship for Sri Lanka this year. Well, 
I hope you do, and all of us here in Sri Lanka hope you do bring glory to Sri Lanka. You already have, and we wish you all the very best. Well, that was Aaron Gunawardena uh, finishing second at the second round of the Asian Challenge of the 2017 Asia Road Racing Championship uh, in Thailand. Wishing him all the luck. And that is a wrap of Lunchtime News. Thank you very much for watching us. I'm Shain Jarampati. Have a good day.